Folks, today I'm going to respond to a reviewer who has asked me some questions about frame rate uh, with the GoPro Hero 3. So I'm going to respond real quickly. I'm going to read you his question first, which is, Hi, I was wondering if you happen to have any video reviews on GoPro Hero 3 Black, explaining, demonstrating the various frame rates and video resolutions. Example, 1080p 60, etc. Uh, I just bought one, I love it. However, I'm still mystified as to what the best resolutions, frame rates are to use for slow motion, time lapse, etc. <clears throat> let me address this real quickly. First of all, let me say uh, I'm not the end all expert on this. What I am is a guy who shot probably a thousand GoPro videos now. I don't know. Look at my, my YouTube channel and see there's a bunch of them. But I'm going to tell you on a day to day, uh, in practice, kind of what I've noted about the GoPro Hero 3. First of all, the website says that it records at bit rates up to 45 megs per second. Some of those bit rates are 35 megs per second. Uh, there used to be somewhere on the web, I don't know where it is, I've, I went and looked for it today and couldn't find it, there used to be a, um, a place where it told all the various different bit rates, in other words, how many megs per second is it recording at all these different frame rates. So the frame rates are, uh, you know, of course, how many frames per second is it shooting? Is it shooting 24 frames per second? Is it shooting 30 frames per second? Is it shooting 48? Is it shooting 60? Is it shooting 120 up to 240? Of course, with 4K, you have 12 and 15 frames per second even. All these different frame rates translate really well to YouTube, even the 15 frame per second uh, 4K stuff. I've made some videos and, you know, why do I export them at 30 frames per second, which is what YouTube really likes, and it works really well. If you shoot at 12 frames per second, Make it 24, and YouTube still likes that and uses a 24. Here's what I'll say about this, though. Let's set up a scenario here. Let's say that we're driving down the road or we're on our bike, a um, motorcycle or whatever, and we're shooting video, and we're going down the road, and we're shooting 1080p video, which is a 1920 by 1080 tall, right? Progressive video. And we're shooting at 30 frames per second. As we go quickly by trees and things, if we've got this thing pointed straight forward, there's going to be some motion blur. There's going to be motion blur because you're getting a, a frame shot one thirtieth of a second, so 30 frames per second. If, however, you shoot it at 48 frames per second, you have 18 additional frames every second that that's going to be shooting, right? So those trees and things that are passing you by, you're going to see more detail in them. Um, I've noticed this. A lot of times I'll shoot with, with a GoPro on the front of my car. I, I, I just put these uh, the mounts actually on the top of my windshield where the windshield wipers don't hit them. And uh, I've got one that points forward. I've got a little mount that I've got. I've got one that goes about a 45-degree angle this way and a 45-degree angle this way. If I shoot at 48 frames per second, everything looks pretty darn good going up to maybe 45 miles per hour. I can stop frames over here, and I can read signs. I can see people's expressions and stuff and faces. If I do it at 30 frames per second, not so, not so well. You do it at 60 frames per second, you're getting 60 uh, images every second that it's shooting. However, <clears throat> here's what I'll tell you about that. Uh, if you're going 60 frames per second in an area where there's complicated uh, backgrounds. For instance, to give you an example, uh, forest with thousands and thousands of leaves that it has to render out in each image, right? 60 frames per second. 45 megs per second is your data that's going into it, right? So you've got 60 frames per second taking up 45 megs per second. Now that's, that's, and forgive me again, I don't know all the different, um, data rates. There may be someone that knows where that link is. I went looking for it today. I can't find it anymore. I even go to, to GoPro's website and all it says is up to 45 megs per second. Uh, I think most of them are probably shooting at 35 megs per second, most of the different settings. So, so here's the point I'm trying to make is at 60 frames per second, it's dividing that 45 megs per second by 60, right? If I take a calculator, Let's say 45 megs divided by 60. That means there's going to be 750K on each image. Now, let's say we shoot, uh, once again, 45 divided by 48. Then we're going to end up with 930K per second. <clears throat> so here's the situation. You're going to, if, if you're driving through complicated areas where I would say, now I'm talking about driving, it could be your bike, it could be your motorcycle, we're talking about high frame rate and being able to slow-mo stuff, right? If it's backgrounds that are changing constantly, you probably want to go with something a little lower, like 48, just so it can have more data to create the image. 
And the thing I found out, <clears throat> I've been somewhat disappointed when I go to render out some of my videos. The GoPro video shoots really well, but then I'll, I'll, so I'll go to export a, you know, a good piece of driving video, and maybe it's a 10-minute driving video, and the YouTube limit is generally two gigs is as big as you can do a YouTube video. So I'll have to encode it down to maybe 17 uh, megs per second instead of like 35 megs per second. And, uh, and so I'm going to end up typically with less quality. I'll start noticing a lot of pixelations in uh, places where I'm moving. Let's set up a different scenario. Let's say you're shooting your buddy jumping off of a diving board and you want to show him in slow motion making his flips in the air and he goes into the water. Typically, you're going to have maybe a sky background. You're going to have maybe some a lake and some water. You're going to have maybe a, a building or something in the background. You're not going to have a super complex background. You can shoot at a very high frame rate, like 60 frames per second, 1080p. You'll be able to slow that down with your software. Like, say you want to slow it down 50%. If you slow it down to 50% and you got 30 frames per second, which is typical. Uh, I use Adobe Premiere Pro CC. I'll take... 60 frame per second video and slow it down to 25 percent and i realize my yield is just going to be 15 frames per second but when you when you export it, it doesn't look bad uh let's say you want to shoot something like a i don't know you're popping a water balloon right probably you're going to want to go to something that's even higher frame rate and your your 720p does <clears throat> up to 120 frames per second looks really nice too so 720p is still a good high def you know, still a reasonably high def uh, image. You could put that thing, you could pop the water balloon, see the water hang in the air for a brief millisecond before it falls. You could slow that down to 10% and, and you've still got, you know, you still got 12 frames per second watching that balloon pop. And I've done this, I, I've shot actually in the 240 frame per second, which does not look so great out of the GoPro Hero 3. It's not bad if you're outside in the sunlight, uh, but I've actually shot hummingbirds I put one of these things on a microphone stand and put it about, I don't know, a foot from a hummingbird feeder. The hummingbirds start to ignore it after a while, and I can catch the, actually the motion of their wings flapping. So I guess the answer to my question is you need to experiment. Field of view, that's totally up to you. That's, that's up to your taste. The field of view doesn't seem to <clears throat> at all affect the bit rate or anything like that or the quality you know if you like it to be really wide to set it really wide i prefer the medium field of view when i shoot almost i'd say probably 75 percent of my hero 3 uh, shooting is done in medium i almost never use the narrow field of view um, because you know every other camcorder i've got shoots narrow um, and, it, and it shoots probably a little better quality than the Hero 3. The Hero 3 shoots the medium and wide field of view shots really excellent. Sometimes I feel like the wide field of view shots, unless I'm in just a big expansive um, locale, like you know the Linville Gorge is a place I go a lot and shoot video, where you, you just want to see that huge panorama. But I feel like a lot of times when I shoot in wide field of view, that things seem a mile away from me. And it's just basically because it's taking that and it's using that fisheye lens look and it makes things look like they're farther away. Medium field of view actually shoots pretty nice wide uh, field of view. And, and so if I'm shooting things that are fairly stationary, uh, I'll still shoot 30 frames per second because I'm going to get better quality. At, you know, it's it's the 30 frames per second is dividing that 35 megs or 45 megs, whichever it is, by only 30 frames. So, you know, if I'm shooting 48, I usually only use 48 when I'm in, in motion. I find 48 frames per second, 1080p, to be a pretty nice compromise as as far as data that's being used, image quality, and speed so I can slow stuff down if I want to or so I can stop action things. 1080p60 is fantastic on these. I just would not go buzzing through very complicated areas. Like on GoPro's website, they'll show, I'm sure, some stuff that's shot 1080p60 where planes are flying over landscapes. You know, that's not a complicated, that, that, there's just not so much data there that has to be rendered out. It's lots of blues. See what's happening with these this compression and stuff, with video compression. It's the same thing that happens with JPEG compression. If you've ever noticed, you know, you might shoot a raw, camera raw, or just a, just a, a, a full resolution JPEG, and it'll be humongous, right? It'll be maybe you got 4,000 pixels wide, and uh, your image comes out to be, when you look at it on your, on your, uh, on your computer, you've got maybe a 9.5 meg or 8 meg file. You might go to uh, size, to, to maybe you leave it the very same size, but you do a save for way about a Photoshop. It will knock it down to, you know, 3 megs or something like that. 
What it's doing, what the JPEG compression does, is it's taking colors that are very near to each other, and it's averaging those colors together. There's a, lot of a lot of times it'll take the sky, the blues in the skies, or, or like if, if I've got this wall behind me, there might be, you know, 2,000 different colors of, of beige in that wall behind me, but the JPEG compression will average those. Well, the same thing happens with... Um, with video, with MPEG compression, which is what's being used, is what it's doing, the, the codec, the code decode software, is actually taking the complicated uh, portions, like, for instance, me and this crazy check shirt, and it's, it's giving the detail to that, and it's, it's kind of averaging out the pixels that are behind me that are all sort of the same. So what it does is it actually gives you the illusion that there's a lot of data there when there's really not. And that's the way video compression works, just the way the same as photo compression does. So if you're going through an area where it's very complicated, then it, you're going to lose, you're going to actually get some pixelation there just because at that high frame rate, it's trying to jam all that data uh, into those multiple frames when it only has a limited amount of bandwidth or data width, rather, I guess, to force that into. I may not be explaining this the best way. I'm trying my best to do this. Some some people might, in the comments, explain it better than me. But uh, uh, if you're going through a, a very complicated type area and, and you want those things to shoot, maybe you go slower. You want those things to render out better. Maybe you want to move slower through those areas. Um, I, I tend to think 1080p 48, though, is, is awesome. 1080p 60, if you're going, like, say you're water skiing and you got lots of blue sky and just some water underneath you, not a whole lot of trees and mess around, 1080p 60 is going to look fantastic. Uh, 720p, it's going to look great. The, the 960p, the only reason I've ever used 960p, it's the same as 720. It just it adds more pixels at the top and bottom. If I'm in a, a location where I think, well, I might want to use those pixels, uh, I, might, well, I might want to have those extra pixels at the bottom, extra pixels at the top. Because what you can do, you can import that into a regular uh, 12, uh, 720 by 1280 rather than 960. You can import that in there, and, and then you can slide that image up and down. You can use more of the sky or more of the bottom. Uh, in other words, I've got some videos that show how you do this. You just import maybe a 960p into a 720p piece of video or, or sequence. <clears throat> and then you let it... You let those other pixels hang off the screen, right, uh, off the bottom and top. And then if you want to raise that up a little bit or lower it down a little bit, you can do that to show more sky or show more at the bottom. So I have used 960p, but not very often. I use the 720p when I want super high, fast, uh, and still high def uh, video. Uh, if I want something really, really slowed down, then I will shoot in the, uh, in the 240 megs per second standard video with WGA, I think it's called. It looks really good only if you're out in sunlight. Under Particularly under fluorescent lights, it looks horrible. So uh, I don't ever use it inside. I use it when there's plenty of bright sunlight. I've got some videos of myself shooting a, a tangerine, an apple, and an egg, for instance. So I've got to look for my video that shows me shooting an egg with a pellet gun. It's pretty cool. You get that whole how the, how the egg goes. So anyway, I hope I've made some sense here. Uh, 1080p 30 is great for anything. That's what I'm shooting in right now. Uh, it's just if you're going to be a lot of motion, you're going to see that blur. If you want to be able to stop on those images, I would go to 48. Uh, if you're going to be out shooting at 15 frames per second in 4K video, or if you're going to shoot in 2.7K video, um, which does 30 frames per second on the Hero 3 Black, then I would just recommend you don't move real fast, right? Uh, when I went to the Limble Gorge and shot my 4K video, I tried to just not, you know, I wasn't doing a lot of this. That would not work at 15 frames per second. Be sure that your moves are fairly deliberate and slow. You might even want to take a tripod with you. Um, I've got a monopod that has sort of a fluid head top on it, and I can do nice subtle moves. And uh, it's really great for, for these panoramic awesome shots. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if this has helped or not. Just the, the main thing to understand is that frame rate and bit rate, in other words, the amount of data going into the image, is related to, um, is affected by the frame rate, or the frame rate is affected by that data rate, vice versa. So in other words, the more frames you're shooting, the less data is going to be in each frame. So if you can shoot a less complicated image, then you can go with higher frame rate, and you're still going to get excellent quality. If you're shooting very complicated stuff, maybe you just slow down a little bit, and you shoot at a lower frame rate, like 48 or even 30. Folks, hope this has helped. 
15 minutes of me just going on. Sorry, it's not being uh, maybe more cohesive or coherent than it would normally be. Lots of examples on the website of how this works um, and, and I, uh, on my YouTube channel. I try to explain what frame rates a lot of times in the descriptions that I've used to get these videos. So send me any more questions you got, and I'll try to answer them, try to do my best. Uh, good luck out there in the world with your GoPro Hero 3s. I think they're just fantastic. I still use my Sony's and Canons. I mean, anything that shoots great video is what I'm going to use. And uh, the Hero 3 just opens up a lot of doors for me. And those of you who are asking these questions about frame rates and uh, and uh, field of view and all that, you understand, you that own it, why these little cameras are special. So good luck. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe if you like. Y'all be cool. Peace.